Hello. Uh, last class we worked on word problems, and all of those word problems were similar and simple in style. They were all obviously linear with a constant number or a starting number and a rate to go along with it. Now this doesn't always have to be the case. Sometimes our word problems can be a little bit harder to uh, tease apart how to model or how to write the equation. And so that's what we're going to look at today is a few examples that are a little more challenging, although not not supposed to be terribly scary. We'll talk through them and make sure they feel good. Okay. Uh, uh, throughout the whole class, we're going to continue to lean on these steps that we went over last time for, for problem solving or word problem solving. We're going to make sure we understand the problem. We're going to make sure we define a variable. We're going to write an equation from all of the uh, knowledge we have gained, solve the equation, and answer the question. So let's dive right in. We did these steps last time. So this one's not too hard. So that the area of a triangle is 21 square feet, and its base is 14 feet, find the height of the triangle. Well, we're going to do what we typically did last time and try to see if we can first understand the problem. So it looks like they're giving me the area of a triangle. And they're telling me one of the pieces, its base, and I'm supposed to find the height. That's not too bad. Now, what do you know about the area of a triangle? I think the formula is if you were to take the height and the base and multiply it by a half, the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. Okay, well, this is nice then. So we... we I think if we know these pieces, we should be able to write an equation and we should be able to solve for one of the missing pieces. So let's see if we can do that. The first thing, we've understood the problem. Now let's define a variable. So let, well, we don't even have to use x. We could use x or we're looking for the height. We can let h stand for height. We could use variables that have more meaning to us so we remember kind of what we're doing. So let h be the height. Okay, and let's see if we can write an equation to model this thing. Well, we know it's the area is equal to 1 half base times height. And we happen to know the area. The area is 21. 1 half. Oh, I also happen to know the base is 14 feet. So I'm going to put it in parentheses. You don't have to. You can just put multiplication symbols. All right, nice. Now we have this equation to solve. <clears throat> so we've read it and understood it. We defined a variable, and we've written an equation. Now we just need to solve it. If you remember a few lessons ago how I laid out kind of the three S's to solving, the first thing we need to do is simplify. So we'll look to see if we can simplify this. And I can multiply a half times 14. A half times 14 is just half of 14, which is 7. Okay, well, it's simplified. I don't have to worry about, to check, the variable being on the same side because there's only one variable on one side, so that's taken care of. So now I can solve, and this is really easy. Is h by itself? No, there's a 7 with it. Well, how do I get rid of that 7? Well, I'm going to divide both sides by 7. So 21 divided by 7 is 3. The 7s divide out to 1, and I'm left with an h. Nice, I solved my problem. Now the last piece is I need to answer the question. Let's see what the question is or what it's asking us to do is find the height of the triangle. Oh, we got that. Um, the triangle height is three, let's see what the units are. Feet, feet. So the height is three feet. Nice. That wasn't too hard. It wasn't a straight like a linear equation with a uh, a rate in a starting number, or it was just an equation that's based off of a geometric formula. That's not too bad. We can handle that. Let's look at the next word problem. The next word problem is oh my! It wants us to find three numbers. This might this might be a little bit troubling, but let's see if we can handle it. So find the three numbers. Whew. All right, this is one that's very wordy. So let's read it first just to get the feel of it, and then we'll focus on details. So the second number is 3 times the first number. The third number is 115 more than the first number. If the sum of the three numbers is 190, 
what are the values of the three numbers? So now my head might be, your head, I mean mine is, might be spinning a little bit from all this wordiness. But the important thing to realize here is I'm just looking for three numbers. Now there's a problem there. How many variables have we been defining just one at a time? We only seem to be able to find right now until a few chapters in. We're only going to be able to find one variable at a time. So when I read it to make more sense of it, let's see what I can figure out what I need to define x as. So there's three numbers. I can't put three variables. So I'm going to need to define x as, I guess, one of the three numbers. Let's see which one makes the most sense. So notice it doesn't give me a sentence describing the first number. It describes the second number. And it describes the third number. But I want you to pay careful attention to something. Each time it describes a number, it describes it in terms of the first number. So if I knew the first number, I could find the second number. It's just three times it. If I knew the first number, I could find the third number. It's just adding 100 or it's 115 more than the first number. So they're giving me the second and third numbers based off of the first number. Okay, so when you have one of these wordy ones with a lot of things, you want to kind of pay attention to what the descriptions are based off of. And since these things are based off of the first number, that's what I'm going to let my x be. Because if I could find the first number, I can find the second and the third. So we're going to let x be the first number. Out of these three. So from that, we should be able to kind of describe the other two numbers. So the second number, well, that's, let's read this. The second number is 3 times the first. So it's just 3 times whatever the first number is. Do I know the first number? No, but what am I calling the first number? I'm calling it x. So 3 times x. And the third number, we should be able to describe that. Let's see, the third number is 115 more than the first number. So if I could take the first number, I don't know what it is, we're calling it x, and 115 more than, mathematically, what is that? If I say, oh, what's 3 more than your age? You're going to take your age and add 3 to it. So the words more than mean to add. Okay, so 115 more. So we're adding 115 to the first number. So if you look at this now, I have the first number, it's called x, the second number, it's 3x, and the third number is x plus 15. Now, I know I don't actually have the values of the number, but I have some way of describing them. So what that means is if I could just put them together in one whole equation, I would then be able to solve for x. Well, lucky for us, this sentence right here helps us put them together. The sum of the three numbers is 190. That means if I were to take the first number and add it, because that's what sum means, to the second number, and add it to the third number, it would equal 190. Well, I don't know the first, second, and third numbers, but I do have things that stand for the first, the second, and the third numbers. So let's plop those in instead. So the first number is x plus my second number is 3x plus my third number is x plus 15 sorry, 115, and bring down the equal 190. Well, now I have an equation to solve. Now we can actually do our math and feel happy about it. And so, remember our three S's, the first thing to do is try to simplify. There's nothing to simplify on the right side, but the left side, I have X plus 3X plus X. These are all like terms, aren't they? X plus 3X is 4X plus another X. That's 5X. Bring down your plus 115, carry it down equals 190. So now, all I need to do here is um, I've simplified both sides. They're both simplified. There is no um, variable on both sides, so I don't have to worry about that. I just need to work this out and solve this for x. So if I'm going to solve this for x, I'm going to start by subtracting 115 because I'm going to ask you, is the x by itself? 
on the left side of the equal sign? No, there's a 5 and a 115 with it. Which do I get rid of first? Uh, the plus 115. How do I get rid of a plus one or a positive 115? I subtract 115. And because I'm changing values, I got to do it to both sides. And so I'm left with 5x, 115 minus 15, gone, equal sign, 190 minus 115. That is uh, 75, I believe. You may want a calculator, or you may want to check me <clears throat> to let me know 190 minus 115 is 75. Sometimes I think my brain works well, and I'm like, I think I know that, and then sometimes I'm just crazy. All right, now, so we need to still get the x by itself. It's got a 5 with it. I'm going to need to divide both sides by 5 to get rid of that. So x will equal 75 divided by 5, which I'm pretty sure is 15. Maybe I should check myself on a calculator. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's 15. I won't bother checking it. I feel confident. All right, so x is 15. Huh. So this is why we have that last step in our steps is to answer the question. If you just tell me the answer is 15, woohoo, we feel excited. We found x. That was the variable we defined. Have we answered the question? What are the values of all three numbers? No, we haven't. We might be able to say what the first number is, but we haven't done anything to think about what the second or third numbers are at this point. So let's see if we can answer this part of the question. So what is the first number? Oh, that's what that's what x was. x is 15. The first number is 15. We got that one. Yes. What's the second number? Oh, just 3 times x. 3 times 15. That'll be 45. <clears throat> and then... The third number is x plus 115. So what's our x value? 15. 15 plus 115, that is 130. And there we go. We have found all three numbers. We have answered the question now. Awesome. So that was pretty involved and mingled feeling, but uh, uh, what practice is on your own with the homework, and even you can even repractice this problem by covering up our work and trying it yourself, and you'll kind of start to feel a coziness with it when you realize some things, that the other two numbers are described based off of the first, so we let that be x. Because of their descriptions and calling the first number x, you're able to write expressions to represent the second and third. And then once you have something to stand for the first, the second, and the third, they give you a way of putting them all together into one equation. They're just added up to 190. So that's not too terribly bad. When you read it, it's very wordy and, I don't know, I just don't like reading these words. But once we put the math and the logic together, it's not too bad. All right, one last one. And this one is a, an important one. This one is a distance rate time problem. Okay. Um, and this is one that will follow you into the next math class where they'll ask, actually, we'll do this throughout the different chapters. We'll have some distance equals rate times time, okay? They love these questions on, on almost all levels of our, our college algebra and, and even some of the um, next few classes. They love to ask distance rate time problems, okay? And hopefully you remember that kind of from physical science or even, even some other math classes in high school that... Um, Those distance rate time problems. Come on now, erase. All right. So let's see if we can make sense of this. It says, might need a drawing. That's one thing I love whenever I, I go to make sense of word problems. Sometimes I just need to draw to understand it. So two cars are starting at the same point. Now, sometimes in class, in person, I'll draw my cars. But on this little pad that I'm writing on, I don't know if I can draw pretty cars. But we're going to have two cars. We'll go with a red dot and a blue dot starting at the same point. So two cars start at the same point and travel in opposite directions. Okay, so let's draw them going in opposite directions. Boom, boom, that's about as straight as I can draw. One travels four miles per hour faster than the other, and in two hours, they're 208 miles apart. Find how fast each car is going. Oh my, this, this seems overwhelming, but it's not. Let's try to think about what we know. Well, after two hours, they both stop, and how far apart are they? They're 208 miles. Okay, I still don't think I know what, you know, everything we're dealing with, but at least I have an idea of what's happening. I have the concept of the problem. Starting at the same point, driving in opposite directions, and they're 208 miles apart. Let's try to do our job of defining a variable. 
So they start at the same point, drive in opposite directions. One's four miles an hour faster than the other. How fast is each car going? Well, I can't define an x for two things. I'm only defining it for one. So let's just let x equal the speed of one of the cars, or how fast one of the cars is going. So let's just call it car one. Car one speed. I'll need to find car one speed and car two speed, but I'm not quite sure how to do that yet. Now, to organize information for these distance, rate, and times problems, I'm going to go ahead and tell you a lot of people like to put them in a table. Now, I hate putting them in a table. I just like to think of the math, but it does help most people. My brain is just messed up. I'm all dyslexic and backwards and left-handed and stuff. So this might help you. So we're going to have uh, two trips here. We're going to have one row for car one and one row for car two. And then we're going to put in, basically, the things that relate everything here is distance, rate, and times. And the formula is distance equals rate times time. And let's see what we know. Okay, what do we know? Well, I don't actually know their rates. Oh, wait, I do. I know that car 1 is going x miles per hour. Nice, because we defined that. We said x is the speed of car 1. And do I know how long it traveled? Oh, it just straight up told me it traveled for 2 hours, so I know the time. Nice. Oh, well, because I know the rate and the time, if I multiply those together, it gives me the distance. So what is x times 2? <laughs> That's easy. That's just 2x. Nice. Let's see if we can do the same thing for car 2. Well, if this car is just going x, I know that one car travels 4 miles per hour faster than the other. So if this one's going x, I can say car 2 is going x plus 4. 4 miles an hour faster. x plus 4. Nice. And do I know how long it traveled for? It also traveled for 2 hours. Ooh, wait a second. I think I should be able to put this together. Multiply these two things together to get the distance of car 2. Let's put this in parentheses, though. Anytime you're writing in any of these boxes and you have more than one term, you need to put them in parentheses, because if you do any operations, I'm going to have to be careful to apply it to this whole expression. So if I were to multiply 2 by this x plus 4, this 2 is going to be distributed. So 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times this positive 4 is going to be positive or plus 8. All right, nice. So I have the distance for each car. Huh, I still don't know where I'm going. Let's see what else I know. Oh, wait a second. I know that they are 208 miles apart. Look at my beautiful picture over here. What that means is if I took the distance of the blue car and I added to it the distance of the red car, what should it add to? It should add to 208. And I happen to have some algebraic expression to stand for the distances. So let's see. Let's take the first car's distance, which is 2x, and let's add to it the second car's distance, which is 2x plus 8. And the total distance, when I add these two distances together, has got to be 208. Nice. Now I have after all that work, have written an equation. I can solve the equation for x. Once I have x, then I can maybe answer my questions. Okay? So, let's look here. I do have stuff to simplify. 2x plus 2x is 4x plus 8 equals 208. And then I can subtract 8 from both sides to start solving. So, 4x equals 200. And then I can divide both sides by 4. And so x is equal to 200 divided by 4 is 50. Nice. Am I finished working? Now i got to answer the questions. And the question is, how fast is each car going? Find the speed of each car. Well, I have x. x is the speed of car 1. So uh, one car, so car 1 is 50 miles per hour and car 2 is hmm we need to think about this well it's speed look at their rates we have this table this box that organizes all the information one was x which we know is 50 the other is x plus 4 or if you look up here 4 miles an hour faster so adding 4 to 50 would be 54 is that 4 miles per hour faster if you're going 50 and your friends are going 54 they are in fact going 4 faster nice so that's the hardest 
word problem on the test, and it's not really that hard. If you take the time to draw yourself a picture, take the time to make a table and organize the information, they will always easily tell you the times. You will always define one of the speeds as an X for this, this word problem setup, and the other one will be some spin-off of the X, some expression using X, like X plus 2, X plus 4, X times 5, something like that. And then you multiply these to get the distances. Because they're starting at the same point and going opposite ways, their distances together will be their total um, distance apart. And then you can work from there. All right, well, that's all I have for you for now. Um, until next time, I hope, hope that you have a good day.